Yo, what is going on guys? My name is Brent and welcome to part 7 of my tutorial series on how to create multiplayer games. So in this tutorial, we're going to be talking about the player moved event and we are going to be emitting events when our client moves and updating those movements on uh, additional clients that are connected to our server. So it actually feels like when one player moves, all players notice it. So if you're interested in learning how to do that, go ahead and stick with me. Okay, so today we're going to start off in our multiplayer demo class, which is our client side, and we're going to create two new variables. The first being a private final float update time that represents how often we're going to be sending our starships position to the server so the server can update other clients. And for now, we're going to do it 60 times a second. Um, but you know, it probably best to just do 30 since I'm running it locally. We don't have to worry too much about uh, latency or anything like that or how fast we can send data. And then we're going to create a um, float timer here to keep track of how much time has passed uh, since the previous uh, message was sent. So let's go ahead and scroll down a little bit and create a new method around here. We're going to do public void update server and this will take inside a float delta time and inside this we are first going to increase our timer by uh, the delta time and next we're going to say if the timer is greater than or equal to our update time and our player is created uh, player does not equal null and um, player has moved, then we can go ahead and update our server with the position of the player. So let's go ahead and create a package of data that we're going to send to our server and that data is going to include the X and the Y coordinate. Now we could also send the ID but that could cause some problems and with cheating you know you could send somebody else's ID uh, to the server and update other people's positions so we're just going to send the X and Y coordinate and because the server has our socket information it already knows our ID anyway so what we can do is say a JSON object and we'll just call this data equals new JSON object and then inside we're going to do a try and catch block catch um, JSON exception e and then we can gdx.app.log socket.io that's the tag and error sending update data if there was any kind of JSON exception. Now let's go ahead and put the information inside of our data object. So data dot put um, and then it'll be X and then player dot get X and then data dot put Y and player dot get Y. And then what we want to do is do socket dot emit and the name of the event it's going to be player moved and then the data that we want to send is a data and then and there we have it. Now we can scroll down to the render method right below and in, and include update server on every render cycle. So update server and then gdx dot graphics that get delta time will be the float value that update server gets. Now we need our client to respond to a player moved event when it receives it from the server. So I want you to scroll to the bottom of our file here. We're gonna go ahead and just copy one of these so we don't have to retype it um, and then paste it right below. We are going to change the name of the event to player moved and then it's going to get a JSON object for the data. And then what we want to do is we'll just go ahead and delete this stuff right here. And we are going to first get the string for the ID. We're going to call this player ID equals data dot get string. And we want the ID there. Then we want a double for our x axis for where the player is in the x coordinate. 
and that will be data dot get double and it is going to be labeled X and then we can also data dot get Y there we go and then we want to do is say if um, friendly players dot get by the player ID if that returns um, not equal to null then what we want to do is say friendly players dot get player ID then set their position to x dot float value by y dot float value so that was a little fast. So let me uh, reiterate what is going on here. Uh, so when our client receives a player moved event from the server, and of course another client would have to emit that event for the client to admit it to this client, um, what we're gonna do is the server will be sending data and that data includes a player ID, an X and a Y coordinate. Now we only sent from an, a different client a X and Y coordinate, the server will add the ID tag before or it emits it to all other clients. And so we're getting that player ID and storing it in player ID and we're getting the X and Y coordinates. Then we are looking through our hash map to find a player that matches that ID. And if we find one, we're going to update that player's position. So the next time it's drawn, it's drawn in the correct position. And while we are still on uh, this class, I want to really quickly do a little cleanup here. And inside the new player, um, the new player event, we are going to change this to a uh, string player ID because this was actually assigning it to our current client ID. So we wanted to change that. And then also scrolling up to render, I just changed uh, the clear color to it clears the. Back, uh, background to black instead of red. So if you're wondering how I did that, it's just changed. This was one, now we changed it to zero. So now let's go ahead and make the transition to our index.js server file. And we are going to create a new uh, listener for the player moved event. So we're gonna say socket uh, on, and then we're going to give it the player moved player moved event. Then we want to execute the function that takes in the data object that we're we're sending the client. And what we want to do inside of this is do data.id equals socket.id. This is where we're appending uh, the player's ID to the data uh, because we only originally sent the X and Y coordinate. Next, when we receive this uh, event uh, to the server, we want to emit it to all other clients. So we're gonna do socket.broadcast.emit, and then it is the player moved event, and we want to send all other clients that data. And then next, we want to update our players array uh, to include the new position. So when new connected clients uh, come around, they'll get the new positions for uh, all connected uh, clients. So we're going to say for var i equals zero, i is less than players.length, and then i plus plus. And then what we'll say is if players i dot id equals data dot id, then what we want to do is say players i dot x equals data dot x and then players i dot y equals data dot y. There we go. So before we test it, I just want to show you that I added a little logging here for every time a player moves or the server transmit the player moves event. It just logs that player's ID, the X and the Y coordinate. Uh, in our terminal and also inside of our multiplayer demo here uh, when I changed uh, the ID inside the new player to player ID I didn't I didn't put that uh, new ID inside the friendly player so this used to be just ID uh, but I had to change it now of course to player ID so let's go ahead and test it 
So here we go, we got two clients running and remember uh, the client, uh, it knows that he is the red starship. So anybody else is a blue starship. So we are clicked on the left client over here and we're moving his red starship and the associated blue starship on the other client is moving. Um, and then if we click over on the right, we're moving their red starship and the associated um, blue starship on the left client is moving. So we now have a multiplayer world where each client knows where uh, the other clients are. Um, we can actually even add a third client here. Let's go ahead and do that and check that out. Hopefully it runs as smoothly at a 60 updates a second. Um, that can be a little fast. Uh, for some other so you can see that our new client updated and now we have three starships here and uh, there you go you can see it up on the on our left screen and then if I come way over here you can see it there as well so we are totally in business two thumbs up good job guys so that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys learned something. Um, we totally created our multiplayer world in this video. I mean, we got our clients sending uh, their current positions uh, to the server and that server relaying information to all other connected clients. So uh, everybody knows where each other's at and they can uh, draw them in the proper position. So two thumbs up for being awesome today, guys. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and post them below. I'm pretty good about getting back to everybody. Uh, if you like the video, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. But more importantly, please share it. I'd appreciate everybody uh, doing that. And you guys have been an amazing support in that. If you're feeling generous, check out my Patreon page. I'd really appreciate that. It's what uh, keeps me creating cool content for you guys. And I'd like to give two big thumbs up to Nick and Aaron for being my most recent uh, Patreon donators. Uh, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Anyways, I appreciate everybody watching and I'll catch you guys next time.